We are live. Uh, it's Tuesday, November 20th. It is 10.03 uh, a.m., uh, meeting of the Economic Development Committee. Uh, we'll call the meeting to order. We'll start with the pledge. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, the first thing on the agenda is to accept the minutes of October 16th. Has everyone had a chance to review those? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I've read the minutes uh, and uh, would like to make a motion to approve of September 18th. Second. Uh, October oh, no. 16th. October 16th. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so Mark has made the motion to accept the minutes and PJ has seconded it. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Next on the agenda, uh, just a quick update on the town meeting warrant articles. Uh, we, we passed our, our, our zoning articles. It was a <laughs> little bit of a surprise. There was some resistance. They uh, were looking to pass it over for more information. Uh, the Recreation and the Agricultural Commission article. Um, we presented some arguments with the town. Both of them were ultimately approved at town meeting. Um, so I, I think the, uh, the first step will be, is probably the, the Agricultural Commission will be set up first. Uh, I am working with Paul Joseph. He seems to have, I think, four out of the five positions confirmed. Um, so I think he's got the, the actual farmers on board. He's got uh, someone that actually manages a farm in a surrounding town as one of the residents. And I think uh, looking for that other one and they'll probably post that and take that up at a future selectman's meeting. Um, it'll kind of tie into uh, a little bit further down. Uh, we're talking about an agricultural forum uh, scheduled for 12-1-2018. And, and I'll just kind of bring that up. The Recreation Commission, I think, was the one that uh, concerned a lot of people at first. Um, and I think a lot of it was how is it operationally going to work, you know, with all of these various, you know, land and waterways and, and, and all that under. So um, I think the best approach with the Recreation Commission is we'll, we'll probably start, we'll have a meeting with the Board of Selectmen, go through it, define it. And our goal is going to be to handhold this committee because it's going to be new. You know, we're going to have to get volunteers, people that may have had no experience with government before, and help them build it. And it may, may and it may be a gradual thing as they ramp up. You know, where maybe they start with the obvious. Maybe it's the town beach and events, and then right, uh, if Ken in the spring, you know, needs help with the rail trails, maybe that's where we fill up that. But. I don't see it happening literally overnight. It's a gradual thing. Um, the marijuana, marijuana zoning articles, uh, the planning board did take the recommendation of us, of the Economic Development Committee, and originally they were shooting for the mill overlay district only. The problem with just doing that district is I think it was like 34 acres involved, and it might have been considered too restrictive by the Attorney General's office. Um, so what they ended up doing on the floor is they modified it to be the mill overlay district and the industrial 130 section, which added like a couple hundred acres, I think, to it. So it's exactly what we talked, remember we originally kind of talking about just the industrial 130 mm -hmm. and then the mill overlay, so it worked out. And so that is on the books. So is there any discussion on the, the articles or any questions or clarifications that anybody needs? All right. Is Next. Any review from the AG's office? Yeah. Yeah. And what do they usually get back, like 90 days, something like that? They usually take pretty much the full 90 days. Yeah. All right. Um, Gentex did, uh, did hold a job fair. Um, we did work with them. Uh, we uh, reached out to Gentex when uh, saw an ad in like the, the Yankee shopper. Uh, we did put their job fair on the website and uh, Michelle and Greg put it on the LED board so you might have seen that when you were driving by. Um, 
they were very happy. And it's the first time the town had ever done anything like that for them. So I would encourage any of the other employers in town, if you're holding a job fair, or if you're looking to get people, you know, give us a call and we'll see what we can do to help you get some attendance there. Um, the Agricultural Forum. Um, this one here we have a little bit of discussion on. Uh, Central Mass Regional Planning um, wants to hold this agricultural forum where they kind of really sit down with the farmers and figure out, okay, what, what should this agricultural commission do? What should the focus be of the town? And the thought was that they would do it on December 1st. Um, I, Don, what are you thinking, like 1 to 4 p.m. or something like that? That range, yes, I'd say so. Might not be the full three hours, probably more like two hours. But more like two hours. Depends if you want to serve food or not, or whatever you want to do with that. So right now, uh, we technically don't have a venue, so we need a venue. And then we got to figure out how to let anybody that owns the 61A land and the farmers know about this event, right? Yeah. We got about a week and a half, two weeks to do it. All right, so for venues, what are we thinking? What, what was some of the things in, in your mind? If we could do it here, but I don't think this is the best place to necessarily hold a meeting. I was wondering if um, this is a public place that, a public place that might be better? Tavern? Oh, the Black Campus. Tavern is, would be convenient to them, and then also uh, maybe even at the Grange itself, right? Grange itself, sure. Maybe at the college. I'm not sure if there's any place like that that college could use. The library. That's a Saturday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What would you prefer? I've never been to the Grange building itself, but how, how big is it? Has anybody been there? Yeah. Yeah, the hall's pretty decent size. Is it? That might be a good place to go then. Hmm? It's a good place to go. I know Kerry has been from CMRPC has been in touch with the with the Grange. So if we were to prioritize, we'd shoot for the Grange first as priority number one. I'd say so. All right, and then uh, backup plan if that doesn't work. Tavern of some kind. Maybe, Black yeah. Tavern. We'll see if that's available. Yeah, the Black Tavern's more segmented, but. Depending on how many people we actually have. Yeah, I can't be that many, I don't think. Yeah, it's just a handful, I would think, right? Mm -hmm. We have a hundred dollars in our in our budget. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we have a hundred dollars in our actual budget. So if we wanted to order some pizzas <laughs> as our food, <laughs> that that would pretty much eat up our budget. <laughs> mm -hmm. Unless we could Negla, the donation from some pizzeria. <laughs> well, one to four p.m. It's it's after lunch, before dinner, so I don't know. What we need to maybe just some coffee and munchkins. Coffee, kind of yeah, coffee and munchkins. Yeah, there you go. All right. So coffee. If you donuts. serve something, you'll get a better turnout. Generally, I think I think Don should cook. Mm. I think he should get some of those farm fresh vegetables and beef and have a nice barbecue when it's like 20 degrees outside. Cook it all up for us. What do you think, Don? <laughs> uh, I think they're pretty early. Huh? Hey, Russ. <laughs> Actually, Russ, uh, it, you were perfect timing. You would just volunteer to uh, be the chef for an agricultural forum on a <laughs> 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 December 1st. All right, so coffee, donuts, and in the meantime, uh, I'll, I'll reach out and uh, depending on the number of people, because I think we can figure out what we want to do with food kind of last minute. Yeah. If we look like we're going to have a pretty big attendance, I'll, I'll reach out to one of the local restaurants or pizzerias or something. Okay, I'll try to get hold of the Grange as soon as possible. Okay. All right, so you'll call the Grange to try to arrange the venue right. with Carrie. And then... Um, really not talking about much of a turnover, though, because, you know, you figure... If you're trying to, are you putting an invitation in the mail? Are you reaching out to people personally? Because Thursday's Thanksgiving, so nothing's happening there. And then you're talking about the following. Yeah. Put it in the mail tomorrow. I, I think it's going to have to be one of those where, uh, if we can get some phone numbers, we actually call. There's some uh, forums on Facebook. There's some of the local farmers. 
engage in. Um, I think it's going to have to be really a personal one-on-one -on -one contact. And we'll, uh, I'll get the list of the 61A lands. Hey, I got that yesterday. You did? I did get that from uh, Lisa, yes. How many landowners there? I don't know. I haven't really had a chance to look at it yet. It came to the end of the day. Is it, so. Would it be uh, the list, is it in a mail merge format? You can do that. So, so maybe we, if we could shoot out. I think it's uh, an Excel document, Excel spreadsheet, rather. All right. So if we could even just we'll create a quick flyer, mail it out, there's got to be less than 100, right? I think so. So we'll use that yeah. part for our budget for postage first. Okay. And then what's left over will be coffee and donuts. <laughs> Uh, we uh, we did set on uh, the first. Could it be moved to the eighth the following week? Or is Buy us a little bit more time. We moved to the eighth, I suppose. Wouldn't okay. go much. So further. the date is flexible. Wouldn't go much further than that, though, because. All right. Know, <clears throat> I'm just concerned. You know, yeah. people already have plans, and yeah. at least that gives them a couple weeks to to say, oh, let me you know make other arrangements or something. I have some samples here, but I. Uh, Email you a link to this, John, if you remember the um, this, the uh, proposed uh, agricultural creation, agricultural committee creation, the document that I gave you a link to. I don't know if I got yeah. that. It's about two weeks ago. So there's some sample forms over there and letters and oh yeah, questions no, and so forth. I didn't get this. You didn't. Oh, I mean, link. I could have. I could have done a bulk delete, <laughs> and it might have yeah, been. There was a there. link to it. I'll, I'll send it back to you. Oh, Just this some is great. Form, some letters in the template. introduction. Templates. Yes, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, creating an agricultural commission it was something I found on the uh, well, Google search. So with something like that, um, and with a news release, you want to? Can we do the eighth? Yeah. Does that work for everybody better? Yeah. All right. So I'll let you for December 8th, but get us an extra week. There's our mailing right there. That's right. All right. <clears throat> so then we'll shoot for December 8th, Grange, Black Tavern, and then third option, Nichols Cafeteria. I'm sure, I'm sure we have a room on a Saturday. All right. That's no problem. We're going to try to get that out this week, like before Friday. Uh, yeah, Don, when, <clears throat> when would we be able to get something out in the mail? Well, tomorrow. You think that quick? You need a little help. All right. Some oversight or something. We can get something out tomorrow, I think. Well, if you can email that to me again, I'll, I'll fill that out. Okay. With our information and get the template, and then uh, well, we have to we have to nail down the venue first before we can mail anything. Right. So probably worst case would probably have to be like Monday, Monday Tuesday, and on how quickly we can nail down the venue. Try to get to someone from the range today. Okay. And maybe we can get you out tomorrow if we if we get everything together. All right. And we still shoot for w about 1 o'clock on the 8th. All right. Any more about the Agricultural Forum? All right. So then next on the agenda, we have the Regional Five-Year Plan. Um, you guys saw the link. Uh, it was approved by the U.S. government. That should give businesses um, additional incentives and um, the town's opportunity to apply for grants uh, that the U.S. government provides as well. One thing if you remember that we did convince the, uh, the creators of the plan that we would like to include some agricultural issues too. So that's included in it as well. Yeah. Yeah, there was, uh, there, there were really, when it originally started, it was very much because of kind of Worcester-centric. And uh, so a bunch of towns really kind of pushed the agricultural portion of it as well. And so it was nice to see that, yeah. you know, in the final adoption. Mm -hmm. 
So nice work on that, Don. I know you were the primary point on that, and Greg was involved in a couple of meetings as well. So, <coughs> uh, the next thing, uh, economic development plan, uh, uh, CMRPC is continuing to, to finish up and do their interviews for the final, uh, the second part of the phase. But uh, I did want to talk to you about a, a meeting that was held yesterday. Uh, myself and Don, uh, Greg uh, kind of coordinated it, but he was out of town. Uh, we have um, a, a very serious developer from uh, the Georgia area who has done a number of mill conversions who we met with yesterday. And um, we were just kind of feeling each other out and see how serious he was and he was trying to see how serious and what kind of you know commitments well, you would get from the town. Uh, and and it, was, it was a very, very positive meeting. Um, the vision is to serve a market, a niche, which are basically uh, young professionals just starting out their careers, millennials, uh, active life seniors, and uh, the projects are um, very much uh, kind of modern. Uh, so what they do is they, they take the mill and they leave the brick and a lot of the wood. They do a lot with lofts, you know, the one bedroom type, a um, handful of two bedrooms. Um, they typically have fitness centers, uh, in, in, you know, in-ground swimming pools. Um, they typically have a number of those things and those kind of facilities. Uh, they did try in a number of their developments to do the first level as commercial. And they found that retail traffic typically didn't go well there. But what they are having success with is when they put uh, amenities in there that the residents can often use as draw. So uh, they found that having the brew pubs and a restaurant on that first floor as part of that commercial tends to be works very well for them. In addition, um, they like to be able to, with the big open spaces, uh, provide venues so that people can have uh, weddings and, and events that are tied into the restaurant as well. Um, they, they really take advantage of the water assets. So you have the river that literally runs part of it through it, you know, from the pond and then along the side. Um, they would really focus in on that. Um, he had mentioned the uh, possibility of uh, uh, helping power the mill. Uh, you know, would we have any kind of opposition to them exploring hydroelectric? You know, with the stone, we said absolutely not. We think it's a fantastic idea. Um, we did say that. Uh, well, they did say that they would be looking for both uh, local, state, and federal monies. Um, the, the banks they work with do a lot with the federal infrastructure kind of grants and programs. Um, the only commitment we gave them is they'll have our 100% cooperation. You know, we'll help navigate them, we'll advocate for them, you know, with the state and the federal government as well. Uh, but at the end of the day, right, it's all about the plan and, you know, what, what it's going to look like. Um, from what we heard, it looked phenomenal. One of the, uh, the things that we asked about was uh, knowing that the commercial was going to kind of be a little limited was the idea of, uh, so to speak, corporate apartments. Um, places that, um, so let's just say, for instance, uh, IPG Photonics, which is a half mile up the road, has people coming in from out of town. And they need a place for these people to stay, whether it's a couple of days or, you know, a month or two. Um, they'd be very open to doing corporate apartments. We brought up Nichols that, you know, people have families that come in, you know, could, could, you, could, could you work with Nichols as you're developing this to see if Nichols may have a corporate need to have a place that they can be able to rent out to their families or if they need additional housing for, for, for some of the kids. Um, so, and I told them that, you know, the town would, you know, because that, you know, it doesn't have to be like a hotel, but if it could be something like the Airbnb where the town could maybe get some revenue on those units if they're rented out, you know, because, you know, the Senate did pass that thing with the Airbnbs. 
So very, very receptive to it. So just to, uh, I'll send a link to some of the articles and some of the, the, the projects that they've done before. Um, the time frame is uh, they're going to be doing an economic feasibility study, uh, both them and the bank, and their estimated completion for that is like the end of December. And then what their hope is that by late spring that they'd have a meeting here at the town with, with all the boards, kind of a real rough plan. If there are any initial concerns that any of the various boards might have, go back, kind of clean up the plan, and then begin the process of really the public engagement at that point. This is not an overnight project. <laughs> a project this size is going to take you know, a couple of years to, to actually do it, but it was very, very encouraging, especially you know, since we had done the, the walkthrough. And um, Brian, you know, I appreciate a lot of the, the, the legwork he had done there you know, and the due diligence as well. Um, but it was very positive. Any questions? What the uh, developer's name is? I'm not going to say it on air. <laughs> it's still too preliminary. Yeah. You know, let's. Um, and I don't know who actually owns the mill today. I don't know who owns it. It might be the original owner. It might be the bank now. I don't know. Who's the tax bill go to? That's the key thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> the last one went to the most recent one. It could be different, too. I would imagine that would be the one of the biggest barriers for this developer is, you know, what does the bank own it for or, or what does <coughs> someone own it for and is that even achievable, right? Uh, he's, in talking with him, I really got the impression that it was up to them, up to the developer, whether or not they want to move forward on the economic and the feasibility stuff. Everything that they've seen and the change in demographics, and we talked about, you know, talked about Worcester, you know, sort of redeveloping as well. You know, half hour, 30 minutes, or 30 miles mm -hmm. is the commute time. So that's the area that they look at. So they'll be looking at roughly 30 miles from Dudley. What's, what's in the area? Is there enough of this generation? You know, are there any kind of these other developments out there? And I can't recall of a, of a unit that's designed specifically for millennials and active life seniors that has the fitness centers and swimming pools, almost like uh, living in a little resort. Can you recall any of in this area? The only area? thing that's close to it is over on Water Street where they rehabbed one of those buildings. It was a commercial building. And those condos have got exercise rooms and they're in close proximity to all the restaurant areas and all of that. So you're drawing a mixture of younger people and older because the units are only one and two bedroom units. That's exactly right. But it's so. designed, you can see just from the, the format, the glitz that's in there, yeah. that it's designed for younger people. Yeah. And they want to be accessible. That's their thing, is to be close to go out and dine and socialize and the whole bit. But they put in the exercise rooms, the whole facility in there. And they did a great job. Yeah, and uh, he made it a point to stress that, you know, that the rents on, on this are typically market and above rents because uh -huh. of the amenities that they provide to their clients. <laughs> Well, I think you're seeing there's been an attraction into the Wisteria. Yeah. Polito and even the governor have yeah. looked to, they've brought a lot more limelight, I think, on Worcester, her in particular, where she's from that area, that I think we see more traffic coming out of the Boston area, even to purchase property, investment property. So you're seeing the movement. We're always the last to come. And now with the thing with the, the baseball bit, that, that may attract a few more people that will get the runoff on, onto it. Yeah. It'll be interesting. Yeah, so, so some of the things that I can see, uh, uh, Don tried to pull uh, some, some brownfields information to see that the property is actually pretty darn clean because it's uh -huh. had some cleanups in the past. And so our previous people in, you know, running the town and would, uh, were on top of things as they did different expansions. <laughs> so it seems to be a pretty healthy piece environmentally. Um, I think uh, what we'll have to really go to bat for them on, uh, it would be a shame for 90% of that parcel to go towards just parking lot, mm -hmm. yeah. right? And so if you think about the use, right, you, you, 
during the daytime right now, you've got Tri Valley that owns a lot of that parking, but at night that's vacant. Mm -hmm. And right, and most of their tenants are going to be gone during the day. They come back, so I think we're going to have to really kind of foster a good partnership and working relationship between Tri Valley and the developer. See if there's some shared resources that they can use and be part of this plan because. Um, you know, parking lot just sits there. <laughs> a lot of it was just sitting there when we took the, the visit too. And I suppose a lot of it stays that way. Yeah. So, but very encouraging. Mm -hmm. Sounds like it. Yeah. Yeah. Over the years, <clears throat> over the years, uh, Don and I have seen before the planning board a number of these, and I don't want to be a, a kill a killjoy to this, but we've seen many, many plans that identify exactly the way you've identified this opportunity and I certainly hope it comes to fruition but uh, is there any um, are they looking for any grant money at all uh, they're, they're going to be seeking uh, all, all local state and federal assistance that's available mm -hmm. okay yeah I know that that was the issue with the last developer that came before us it was when I think it was wind companies or something. But it's anyway. a little different. Yeah, this different. one's a little different. They're not going for the affordable housing. Yeah. And they're not getting in a queue. Yeah, and this wasn't either. But um, anyway, uh, I certainly uh, good, good, you know, opportunity to uh, to utilize the mill, and it w sounds like it would be great for the community and everyone involved. So. Seems to put a lot of emphasis in the economic study before the end yeah. of the year. Well, everything is timing in real estate. And if I go back to when the original owner bought that building, the proposal was for condos. They were really nice, and the timing was not good for water and sewer and connecting and all of that part. But they had a really great design. They were, mm -hmm. at that time, they were into the mid twos, I think, and the highest would have been into the upper twos. But it was just the infrastructure wasn't going to allow it to happen. Looking at that, too, I know some there have been some improvements, but we're looking at that as well. Yeah part of the whole package yeah. <clears throat> but I think the momentum is there on housing again they're talking yeah. next year will be about new construction that we'll finally see some growth into that again coming about and I think uh, I think you have a big market with the Millennials that are out there not all of them are looking to be in a house situation well that's exactly it yeah. no. and the utilities are all ready to go to support that development uh, yeah, when we spoke, when we were building the economic development plan, the, the Water Sewer Commission said that that is, that is the most pad-ready property along their line. That with the, the recent uh, infrastructure improvements that they did there, I think they put 12-inch or six, uh, some, you know, they, they upgraded all the pipes. They said they're ready to go. I mean, that our only issue there might be working with the DEP. Mm -hmm on the water allowance, you know, that whatever the water they allow us to take out. But being so close, I mean, um, so, so that's where the town and, and, and the officials are going to have to really step up and go to bat for a project like this with, with the state and the feds. Make sure that it's not some, some arcane rule that's preventing something like this sure. from going forward. That's good to hear. Yeah. That's good to hear that we're on the map. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll keep everybody informed. I don't expect to hear anything until after they, right? They expect their study to be completed at the end of December, which was actually quicker than I thought, you know? And then uh, they'll probably have to digest it. And then if we get anything, I'll forward it to the board. Um, and that kind of jumps me into the, the, the next thing that's not on the agenda <coughs> is our meeting schedule for <laughs> 2019. Yep. Um, I'm, I know we have a meeting uh, the Tuesday right before Christmas. I'm thinking there's not going to be much on the agenda. That we should just cancel that. If that is anybody opposed to that? Huh? And then, um, what do you? What's what's the board's preference for meeting in 2019? Do you want to continue with the third Tuesday? Do you want to can you want to ch change it up? Do you want to go morning? You want to go evening? Open floor. <laughs> I like morning personally. Mm -hmm. You like morning? Yeah, I do. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. You like morning? Works for me. Yeah. Yeah? All right. Russ, you okay with it too? Yeah, I guess about changing work coming up, so I'll have to uh, kind of see how that works in. But. <clears throat> and, and, and if, I mean, it's, it's always right, family and mm -hmm. job first. So 
if you find that there is a conflict, just let us know and, and don't don't feel guilty if you have to do something different. I'm good. Um, I mean, so for me, Mondays, Tuesdays earlier the better. Fridays earlier the better. So nine o'clock would be fine. Uh, well, what, one of the issues why we had to go with ten is our cameraman. <laughs> Okay. The personnel board and availability, personnel board has this on uh, Tuesdays when we meet at 9 o'clock. They literally just <coughs> leave when we come in. Oh, okay. Yeah. So do you want to just stick with 10 a.m. on yeah. Tuesdays? Yeah. 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 All right. So third Tuesday, 10 a.m. And so what I'll do is I'll, I'll draw that up, and then we'll get that s sent over to the town clerk as well, and we'll post them for the year. Um, Can I go back on one, one agenda sure. item off? I had just sent a text to make sure, like, we can get a classroom space easily on Saturday the 8th. Okay. So if you want to try the Grange first, that makes sense. But if not, we have easy access to a classroom building. And I can, I'll, I'm going to reserve it anyway as soon as I get back to the office. Okay. All right, thank you. That Great. way you. we have it. Okay. Thank you. Any, anybody have anything? So we agreed to cancel December's meeting. Yeah. Right. Right. No objection. Do we need to vote on it? Do you anything to be wrapping up? I don't then? think so. What? Well, results of any forums or any, any site visits or anything you're going to be wrapping up that at that time? CMRPC needs to be wrapped up pretty much by the end of December. Yeah, right. They'll send over the draft. We could we could take care of it because they have to just get their work done for this grant season. They take care of it in January. You mean? Yeah. So we could we could take care of that in January. <clears throat> um. So Don, anything else that you'd like to add? You added it all. <laughs> all right. I got a little I can add in. Yeah, John. And I actually came up with some dates. I have to get the person from UBJ who I need to meet with up at Nichols to set a meeting on that. But I picked like four different dates. I had picked to try and do our uh, video part uh, interview session through the economic development. I picked a January 15th, April 16th, July 16th, and October 15th. A couple of the topics could be retail opportunities, housing opportunities, having a guest bank at each one of those sessions, the four banks, if I can draft a letter to get out to them, that's what I'd like to try and do is work this month to get these filled in, land opportunities and maybe talking to major employers. But I'd like to actually do some on-site taping of these places. I mean, I had even thought even something if we could have gotten into Stevens Linen have something on site that shows it, and then have your discussion, which is why I really need to talk to them to get that part firmed up. But I think four sessions to start would be adequate. I don't want to get in over our head to begin with, and then dividing it into those things. I looked at our site with the town on what we're seeing for economic development or businesses, but that, that's a great list of things that are there. And I started thinking, we don't really have all that much vacant retail space no, we don't. that's there. So I think we got to digress a little bit on that and maybe status of things like anything with over 55, that project, how is that coming along, uh, but doing that. But I'd like to have somebody else, if we want to have that little mini committee, I know Mark had expressed interest, he would be interested in doing this, but I want to get the date, set a time, and meet in the next two weeks to get, find out what we got to have them do to do this taping. And if I can get permission to draft out a couple of letters just as invites, to some of these banks, would they like to come on and talk about commercial opportunities, what rates are, programs, anything different? I think that's a big factor that people need to know. One thing the developer did say yesterday was that this tends to spur us in uh, offspring projects of the re nature of retail services of some kind. We might even find some of the banks have some things in possibilities in this area that they may either have foreclosed or things working on that they want to pair up yeah. to get information on. I know they were close with another project that they bailed someone out quickly because they were investing in it at one of the banks. So it might be a good opportunity for them to talk up and how they're able to step on board and partner with people on doing that. So before we leave, we do need to, I need the contact person on that. So is it easier for the board just to give you full authority to run with this, assemble whatever I'd team like of people you want? I'd like to at least get a draft to get yeah. it going firmed up. I want to have something that I can at least get out to you. But I, I pick dates because when you yeah. have a date to work to, you'll get it done. Exactly. If you just leave it out in the open, you never move forward. So I've got an accountability issue here. 
So it's being able to line up with what, if they're gonna pair up with us for services, for doing any taping or that type of thing. We need to see how we coordinate with them, with the college. All right, so right now, you, Mark's on your team, right? Yeah, yourself? anybody else um, who'd like to participate, that's great, but we don't want to overwhelm, you know yep. what, we don't want to burn everybody out. If you do a couple yeah. of mini things, then exactly. you can do the project, get it done, and then somebody else take on the next one that we need to do. <clears throat> But I was very impressed with what, our, what, what we're doing even through the board's, uh, the selectman site, the, the town site, on listing opportunities that exist in the companies that, that are there. You know, I, think it's, uh, I think people don't realize how much we have going in the town. No. I, I, may, I'm, I was late on coming in, but I did want to ask, how did they find us, the people who came? What made them come out to Dudley to begin with, the people that were looking at Stevens? They have uh, strong relationships with the financial institutions for distressed properties. There you go. Yeah. <clears throat> Specialize in this sort of thing. Yeah. And uh, they uh, they purchased uh, Riverside uh, in Thompson. You know the oh, big mill. Yes. Okay. They, and that one there, they they actually discovered that one. Demolition crew went in there to start salvaging. They started taking down part of that structure. Demolition crew said to the guy, this building's huge. It's in great, it's got great bones. Yeah. And so they got that one through their demolition company and they intercepted the demolition of that one. If you really think about it, you look in Douglas, Haywood Schuster Mill is still around. One of them is housing, one is a uh, commercial space that's there. There's a lot of those buildings that still exist yeah. that have made it through time and recycle white machine works a lot yeah. of the places so I think that sometimes when it's under your nose you kind of take it for granted on these things but it'd be interesting to see all right so, so Duran just run with it you know okay. whatever you need to Good. do um, you know what would be really great I heard from some I think some of my emails you know, go into spam files because once you start copying like more than one person on it, there's so many spam filters. Russ, could I ask you to take a piece of paper and to pass it around right now so that I can get everybody's phone number <laughs> and email address that way? And, and I'll share with everybody that way. If Joanne, you you need some help yep. filming or some somebody has dropped out, <coughs> you know, some maybe someone else could go there and hold a camera or yep. do whatever. PJ, does, uh, you know, since we're kind of open, is, does, is there anything coming up that Nichols needs the help of the town on in any way? Or is there any kind of, I mean, you, you, you're really here, you know, we asked you to be on, you know, because of, you know, the whole Nichols, um, and you've been involved in so many other things. Is there anything that Nichols needs that the town isn't get, providing at this point, or, um, that maybe needs help on? I can't think of anything okay. that the college needs that the town isn't providing. I think okay. they have a pretty good working relationship. So, um, you know, we're, we're right now in a process of forecasting like what's to come in the next 10 years. So that might, um, that might bring up some things as we're talking about, you know, redoing some of our housing. Okay. You know, we have some very old buildings on campus that are, going to cost more to renovate them than it just will be to build something new but that's a that's a 10-year plan that we're just now barely discussing so yeah and and the whole infrastructure is going to be important for that expansion with that the residential buildings mm -hmm. to replace i would imagine to replace some that we have that are really starting to show their age is nickels on the sewer system does it go up there uh nickels actually has invested and paid for it there it's almost like a private source system that ties into the towns so uh, it was all done my understanding at Nichols expense they did everything that was required you know as far as piping and everything else and um, so I, I believe that the campus itself is very well engineered it's just how do you tie it in to the town system at that point you know, but when we were doing the economic development plan and um, some of the research, it definitely was identified as being a barrier to Nichols' growth is the infrastructure because 
you know, as the university grows, people, more and more people want to stay on campus, and you're going to need that housing and the fire suppression systems, and you got to fix not, it. We're not looking to do, we're not looking to really grow. I mean, we're kind of happy where we are, maybe by 100 people here or there kind of thing, but we're not trying to, we're not trying to double our housing capacity or do anything no. like that. We're, we're more, more worried about um, building maintenance and... Okay. amenities that are attracting students nowadays and that sort of thing. But we have a couple of old buildings that are Budley, Budley Hall, right on the top of Budley Hill is uh, an old building <laughs> that we can't hardly get students to live there. So. Oh, really? You still have that temporary, those temporary... Those temporary buildings yeah. have lasted a long time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember they came before the board. The list, um, right? How? What's the, what's the plan for that? Is that... Well, again, that's that's kind of that ten-year plan that we're putting together because they, I mean, they've actually been taken very well. They've lasted longer than they mm -hmm. were intended to, and they've, they they're uh, very well taken care of. They're actually very popular among the students as well. But we'd like to replace those with, you know, with the structure. With, yeah. 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 <coughs> Anything else you want to add? All right, before we adjourn, I want to wish everyone a very happy Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. since we're not going to be here for Christmas, a very blessed Christmas and holiday season. Same to you. Same to you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Fred, to you too. <laughs> so the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So I move. All right, March made the motion. Second. All right, Russ second. Any further discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, everybody.